According to the Singapore Geological Office, a 3D model mapping out rock formations and landfalls in the western and northeastern part of Singapore can be expected next year. A hint at the possibility that underground developments may take place in those areas. Such studies will be conducted progressively as the underground master plan is drawn up. In this week's Spotlight, Olivia Xiong explores the potential of underground development in Singapore. Heading underground here is as much a part of life as the internet. Many of us are familiar with pedestrian linkways at the basement level, but below that, well, between 1 and 10 meters below the surface, a tunnel housing utilities like water pipes and power lines. At 15 to 50 meters, you'll find MRT lines and roads, as well as the deep tunnel sewerage system. Though making greater use of Singapore's subterranean space will mean going much deeper, to a depth of possibly 100 meters and below. That's where the Good Rock is, and where the Jurong Rock Caverns, a petrochemical storage facility, and an underground ammunition facility are located. Researchers say lessons from deep subterranean projects like the Jurong Rock Caverns will come in handy in the future. Uh, for example, in this one, I have a piece of rock, and holding in my hand, it is strong. But in certain parts of the rock, uh, it is locally weak. And for engineering purpose, we want to avoid the weak zones. Otherwise, it will be very challenging and very costly to build the infrastructure at that location. It is also applied to other places in, in Singapore. In future study, we are going to look at the rock properties before the actual construction. Well, National Development Minister Corbyn Wan has previously said while Singapore has made good use of its underground space so far, there's still scope to do much more. Taking reference from other cities, some of these possibilities include underground transport hubs, cycling lanes and even research and storage facilities. For new housing areas like Bidadari and Tampanese North, the Housing and Development Board is studying the possibility of underground pedestrian linkages and cycling lanes. It's also looking at an underground service reservoir within Bidadari Park. But just how receptive are Singaporeans to the idea of spending more time underground? There isn't much space already. So I think underground is really good and also because Singapore is really hot. So it's good to have stuff underground because there's aircon. Cycling underground would be a win-win situation in that we are able to ensure the safety of cyclists as well and uh, by separating them from the cars and all that. People, I mean, they like the way Singapore is so green. So I'm sure they wouldn't like to spend too much time on the ground. Maybe a, ba a good balance of both. But building beneath the surface could come with a heftier price tag. Some experts say building underground is likely to cost one and a half to three times more than building above ground, depending on the scale and complexity of the project. So commercial viability will be a factor. So while technology could make building as deep as we want possible, experts say whether developers will find it worthwhile is another factor. Take a very simple program of a car park above ground and underground. Examples of the additional costs the moment we move underground would be the way that we have to introduce mechanical ventilation. We have to introduce water pump systems to make sure that the water that flows to the lower level get drained out and pumped away. But what's needed now is a deeper understanding of what lies beneath, and that's something Singapore's Geological Office has been studying, in particular in the western and northeastern region of Singapore. Fieldwork has involved boring deep into the ground to gather rock samples. The office is now doing tests to determine the strength and faults of the rocks. The information gathered will be part of a 3D geological model the office is putting together, which should be ready next year. These two areas are generally commercial, uh, industrial areas and the rocks there are generally considered to be suitable sedimentary and granitic rocks and are suitable for underground development work due to its strengths and also uh, able to stand up once you do the construction, excavation and all this. 
Well, then there's the issue of land rights, where different countries have adopted different approaches. For example, in Japan, a law allows deep underground spaces to be used for public infrastructure. Whereas in some parts of Finland, a law prevents landowners from building freely below 6 metres underground. But here in Singapore, the current law assumes that those who own the land above ground also own the land below it, that is to a depth deemed reasonably necessary for the use and enjoyment of the property. But what exactly is reasonable use? That still remains a question for now. The Law Ministry is consulting industry experts to clarify the scope of reasonable use. Lawyers say the definition could be as simple as drawing a line at a certain depth. What they are talking about really here is, is development of subterranean space which is very which is not commercially viable. If that is the case, then probably drawing a line is not going to impact so much on people's rights because they were never ever going to be able to develop note that space anyway. Then the consideration sort of moves towards the inconvenience caused to the people on the surface by underground construction. But then if you go when you go into that realm, then Singapore is fairly used to it because you we de develop quite a lot of MRT lines and, and underground highways. And while the challenges remain, other cities have presented a glimpse of what's possible. In Stockholm, a data storage facility is located 30 meters below ground. And in Helsinki, an underground swimming complex makes taking a dip possible even in winter. Well, here in Singapore, most of us may not get to experience what it's like to be more than 100 metres underground, like where the Jurong Rock Caverns are located. But one thing's for sure, such underground facilities do give us a glimpse of what the future could offer us. And while the underground master plan may take some time to complete, the government says beginning the process earlier will make it easier to learn and faster to realise some of Singapore's underground ambitions.